Uh, thanks so much, Ken. Let's turn back to these major indexes. Uh, joining me now is Thomas Hayes, chair of Great Hill Capital. Uh, Thomas, it's great to have you on the show. Broad-based gains across the board on Wall Street today. Certainly a reprieve after heavy selling last week, but it looks like we're still technically in a bear market. What's your reaction? Well, I think this is a nice relief rally. As you had mentioned, Kristen, there was a lot of pessimism over the weekend about recessions, about the odds of recessions going up. And I think the Goldman and the Morgan Stanley calls about the recession are reasonable, considering the fact that we inverted the yield curve several months back, the 210 spread. Uh, we recently inverted it temporarily uh, in recent sessions. Uh, and then you've got the Atlanta Fed uh, GDP now numbers that are currently at zero. And if they go negative for Q2, that would mean uh, we've had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, which would mean a recession. That's the bad news. The good news is how much is already priced in? You know, as you mentioned, with the S&P down over 20 percent, bear market territory, NASDAQ got down over 30 percent. Uh, I think with a shallow recession, with the employment situation, a good portion of that uh, may already be, be priced in, Kristen. Uh, so a relief rally, uh, Thomas, is what you called it earlier. And I think people would agree with that. Certainly there's no disputing that it was a reality. But how much further could we fall from here? Do you think we've reached yeah. a bottom or do you think there's further selling to come? Well, I, I think that when quality goes on sale, you have to start to nibble. You know, as Warren Buffett says, wi widespread fear is your friend. That serves up uh, bargain opportunities to purchase. Personal fear is your enemy. And I'll give you an example of a once in a hundred year black swan, which was the great financial crisis in 2008. If you bought September 15th, 2008, when Lehman Br Brothers declared bankruptcy, the S&P was down 26 percent at that point. Uh, so you would have bought at a discount. However, over the next few months, the market fell another 44 percent from 1100 down to 666. That seems like bad news. But if you took the long term view, even buying too early, you were up f about 14 percent compounded, including the recent correction versus the long term average of eight or nine percent per year. So basically buying too early, you yeah. doubled your money every 5.2 years versus the average of every eight Thomas. to nine years. So you, you can't get it perfect, but you gotta, gotta nibble when there are opportunities. So here's a question. What do you say to investors who are just honestly scared of the markets altogether? Um, inflation obviously may not have peaked just yet. There are still inflationary pressures out there. Russia is still invading Ukraine and China still technically does have a zero tolerance policy not to mention that we could see another Omicron-like variant pop up when it comes to the coronavirus. I mean, this is still a pandemic after all. And so what do you say to investors who are absolutely almost just turned off by the stock market? They don't know if they want to get back in. Yeah, I would say you have to separate your emotions from the data. Let, let's take a look, for instance, Disney. Disney is down 54 percent off of its recent highs. When you look out three years from now, do you think more people are going to be going to the parks or less people are going to be going to the parks? Do you think more people are going to sign up their kids to watch uh, their, their high quality family content or less people? Uh, Starbucks, it's down 42 percent from its recent highs on the China overhang. China is reopening and they're aggressively stimulating. Uh, do you think more people are going to be drinking Starbucks two years from now than were during the lockdown? And the answer for all of these is yes. So do you have to worry about getting the perfect bottom? No. If you bought at the quote unquote wrong time uh, in 2008 and the market still fell another 44 percent, mm -hmm you still grew your money twice as fast as if you didn't step in when those bargains were there. So I think you have to be selective. Uh, we're not wholesale buying the indices, but I will say you, you, you hit the nail on the head, China, with, uh, with China, Kristen, in that uh, while the West, Europe and the United States are aggressively tightening to bring down consumption, China is reopening and they are aggressively easing. They're, they're one of the only two large economies aggressively right. easing and stimulating their economies. Um, and we've seen some of these technology stocks based out of China do well of late uh, because yeah. the country also scaling back some of that regulation that we had seen tick up these past few years. Uh, Thomas, another question that I have for you is what about people wondering if they should sell at these levels? What would you recommend to them? Uh, selling Chinese stocks? 
No, selling no, no. stocks China. in general, U.S. stocks. Uh, yeah, no. I, look, the time to the time to buy insurance is before your house is on fire. Right now, the house is already burned down, so it's probably a little bit late to be selling. I, we'd be more inclined, and we are in the market buying on a selective basis, uh, particularly you know Chinese market. Uh, the interesting thing about it, both in the great financial crisis and now it seems, China bottomed several months before the U.S. markets bottomed in 2008 and 2009. And I think the same thing is happening now. The Chinese markets, particularly China tech, which got hit the hardest, uh, bottomed in March. Uh, and uh, bellwethers like Alibaba are up over 44 percent in the last few months. Uh, but they're still trading dramatically below their intrinsic value if you consider the earning powers. Uh, power in the out years. Uh, there's still a tremendous amount of things to do. So that's Thomas, one area we've been adding. Yeah, you're adding there. We got to leave it there. Yeah. We're going to end on that note. That's Thomas Hayes, chair of Great Hill Capital. Thomas, thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. And coming up, everyone, a live report from D.